cracking, ladies and gentlemen. 49 coming out, another coming in Shoutcast for the OUSA Dota League Season 2. We're loading into a Group 1 playoff, a best of three series between Blink Dota, the former champions of the ODL 1, and Sync 2, formerly known as TYK. And so I believe it's Sync 2 that have first pick, so it'll be interesting to see what hero they decide to let slip through the first batting stage. Led by their drafter. It was Lambda Driver, I believe it's usually Pandy that drafts for them, but also he seems to switch it up. So, like and throw the first band coming up from Blink Dota, very standard, just as with the ODL one, they immediately uh, choose two heroes they don't want to play again, so in, in this case it's the like and throw, and probably going to be the Tidehunter, since Sync 2 have the first pick, but they could also be choosing to ban out the either the Lone Druid or the Pandarian Brewmaster, so two of Pandy's signature heroes, which is what East Nug did in their best of three series up against them on Friday. So Sync 2 deliberating on their second ban will be interesting to see what hero they decide to ban out, since Skywrath Mage, the Faceless Void, the Shadow Shaman, and the Razor still are available in the pool, and those are heroes that are traditionally banned out in the first banning stage in the competitive scene, and that's just due to the sheer amount of impact they provide. So Doombringer going to be the second ban for Sing 2, and Pandarian Brewmaster being banned out. So Faceless Void and Tidehunter are now available for Sing 2 to pick up, and especially since Sing 2 happened to be the Radiant offlane, Tidehunter would be incredibly powerful since the Radiant offlane has a lot of advantages over the Dire offlane in regards to getting a lot of in regards to getting EXP, since the uh, Radiant uh, Hard Camp is situated close to the Radiant op for the Radiant Offlane to be able to, to divert the Creep Wave, or if it's being double pulled through, he can at least hang back and leech EXP passively. So Sing 2, really deliberating, they said decide to go for the, the Tide Hunter pickup. Pick. So Blink Dota, led by their drafter, uh, Snow, who also is their mid player. It'll be interesting to see what two heroes they decide to pick up. The Faceless Void still is available, and Zeki, who's currently going by the name of 49 hashtag 5200. Plays a fantastic faceless void. He does tend to go for a greedier void where they he goes for a hand of Midas as opposed to the early mask of madness. But Blink Dodo, the first two pickups usually did does determine what kind of style of game they'll be playing. Five seconds remaining. Hold on, I'm just gonna quickly double check my settings to see that I'm still No, yeah, everything should be Reserve good to go on my end. Okay. There is a two minute delay for those of you on the Twitch stream. But hopefully that should rectify itself. Just gonna double check to make sure. Okay, I'm actually gonna increase my volume by a little bit then. Radiant team pick. So hopefully that you should be able to hear me a bit better now. So Death Prophet and Shadow Shaman, so Blink Dota are really revealing their hand. They're going for the uh, Death Pole five man push build. With two very powerful uh, pushing heroes, so you've got Death Prophet in the mid lane, so Snow going to be playing that Death Prophet, and Death Prophet wins a lot of 1v1 matchups, but the drawback of picking her up this early on in the draft is it leaves you open for counter pickups. So heroes such as the Templar Assassin and the Puck do very well against the Death Prophet since they could outlast her Crypt Swarm and out DPS her so they could uh, get CS in lane and deny her. Shadow Shaman, very powerful support hero but a very greedy one, you have to do uh, well in the early stages of the game. For the Shadow Shaman pickup to be worthwhile, he has to either find kills or find a lot of farm by stacking and pulling in the jungle. But if you're able to disrupt the Shadow Shaman, if you're Clash Tribe you try and the Shadow Shaman's playing from behind, he then becomes a huge liability for his team because he's squishy, he's slow, and he chews through a massive amount of mana. So until he gets Arcane Boots, he can't get the full complement of his abilities off and then have another, enough mana for another Aether Shock, which is the majority of his damage. And so Shadow Shaman, he needs a fair amount of EXP and gold to be effective. You want level 7 up on him ASAP, and you want Arcane Boots up on him as soon as possible. So if you could disrupt that, and if you could, if you decide to Clash Tribe, you try. He is, he does offer you a lot if you coordinate effectively, since he can catch people out with the Shackle. But at the same time, it's very easy to interrupt him. And so Skywrath Mage being picked up by Sing 2, and for good reason. He's currently the most powerful, him and Shadow Shaman are the two most powerful support heroes in the current meta game, because they both favor early engagements, and they both outclass every other support hero. And if the Skywrath Mage catches out, for instance, a Crystal Maiden or a Lich, you can instantly kill them with a Concussive Shot, Ancient Seal, and Mystic Flare combination. Skywrath Mage offers you a huge amount, since you can either play him by maxing out the Arcane Bolt, providing a huge amount of damage. The Arcane Bolt does a massive amount of DPS, especially in conjunction with the Ancient Seal. Or against particular lineups, so if you're playing against an Ember Spirit or a Morphling, you want to actually max out the Ancient Seal by level 7. And so that way you could use that 6 second silence as well as the damage application to be able to hunt those heroes down. But with the recent buff to Ancient Seal, so it's 30% magic uh, damage amplification at level 1, a lot of teams choose to completely to only stick with 1 point in the Ancient Seal, 1 point in the Concussive Shot, and you max out the Arcane Bolt. So you use Skywrath Mage as a glass cannon support, where he's able to deal massive amounts of damage, so it means that you're forced to constantly have to deal with him. And since Skywrath Mage is the fastest support here in the game at 325 movement speed, very difficult to be able to deal with. And so Tree and Protector and Chen. 
being banned out by both teams. The Trained Protector works very well to Skyrath Mage, because Skyrath Mage, what he lacks is Lockdown, and he lacks survivability, and the Trained Ma Protector gives you that in spades, and what, the only thing Trained Protector lacks is damage, and so that's the reason why Trained Protector is so powerful, is he's a su set up support hero, and that also acts as a frontline tank. And later on, once he gets a few points in the overgrowth, can help set up kills through there. And so he provides a huge amount of offensive and defensive capability. Teams used to pick up Trip Protector just for the living armor. Now teams pick him up more so for the Leech Seed, because it gives you such an amazingly powerful early game. And Sing 2 banning out Chen as well as Enchantress. So respect bans going out to uh, Blink Sucky Senpai, formerly uh, Victor or Bambi the Retarded Chiyu. We're going to call him Bambi the Retarded Quizzling, since he did sell out from Felfi and Friends and... Uh, Bambi Rising to Dance be part of Blink Dota. So he's replaced DDY, formerly the full position player over on Blink. So he's now going to be replaced by uh, Victor, who's I think he's playing the 5 and now Yoshi's playing the 4. So Blink Dota, they have had a roster change. And so they're really deliberating on their fourth ban. So they want to ban heroes that could beat their early team fight. And then, as well as being able to beat them in the laning stations, Blink Dota, they're a team that like to win very early. Similar to the way Newbie and Vici play. They want to get an early lead, snow, snowball that leads big as, as uh, much as they can, and then starve out the enemy team, trying to cut them off, get the item advantage, and then take their, breach their high ground. So they ban out the uh, Earthshaker for his ability to be able to impede these team fights, and they go for the Faceless Void pickup. So it's going to be Zeki, currently going as 49, hashtag 4200, going to be on the Faceless Void offlaner. And if they decide to clash try be tried, Tidehunter actually does very well against the Faces Void. Although Faces Void, that being said, also fares a lot better against the Tidehunter than other melees, offlaners. Just because the majority of his, of his hero killing power comes from his time lock, so if he gets a few lucky time lock hits in, he could go for a kill attempt to the Tidehunter, since the Anchor Smash debuff doesn't do anything against the time lock. So seeing two, deliberating on their third pick, they burn through a lot of their reserve time in the second uh, picking stage, so it will be interesting to see what hero they decide to pick up. Reserve time. They could go for a hero like a Puck that gives them a lot of momentum control against a hero like a Death Prophet, since it also beats the Death Prophet in the 1v1 matchup, since you can phase shift the Crypt Swarm and out deny the Death Prophet. But Snow is a very experienced mid player and most likely going to be Pandy playing that mid lane, so instead go for the Ancient Apparition. Ancient Apparition Skywrath Mage. This was a support duo that Blink made famous in ODL1 because the sheer amount of offensive capability it provides you. Chilling Touch with the Ancient Seal it amplifies the damage that you're getting from that. Arcane Bolt does a huge amount of damage, and that's amplified by the Ice Vortex. So you've got two ways of uh, damage amplification for magic spells. And you've got two ways of providing a huge amount of magic damage. The only drawback to this is you lack any immediate CC, any hard CC, but you've got the Concussive Shot from the Skyrath Mage, and that in conjunction with the Ice Vortex is usually enough. And we've got a Razor pick up, so we could be seeing a tri lane. We're going to be seeing a safe lane Razor, going to be played by Flash, with the Shadow Shaman and another support hero. They haven't picked one up yet, but. Since they decided to wait until their fifth pick, Razor. So the entire lineup from Blink Dota is very TI4. It's very in with the meta because Razor's. He's basically a glorified Swiss Army lie. You could you run him in almost any position apart from support, obviously. You can throw him into any lane, so you can run him. And the, as long as he is 1v1, he will be able to decisively win just off the back of Static Link. And he's the one that could build the utility items for your team, so you could build a very early mech up on him. So similar to a Viper, Razor builds the exact same items in the early game. You want to get mech up as soon as possible, then you get your Agatham Scepter, maybe a BKB in between. Razor provides a huge amount of impact in all stages of the game, so long as he has his items, since you have to break even or be ahead with the Razor in order to win. If you're playing from behind, then Razor becomes completely useless. But with the Faces Void and the Death Prophet, it's very difficult to fight into Blink. The Chronosphere sets up uh, both the Exorcism as well as Static Link from the Razor. If, and if you catch either of your cores in the Chronosphere, they don't really care as long as they have the ultimates up. Either Storm and Static Link persist through Chronosphere, and so does the Exorcism. And so it gives them Blink a lot more uh, safeguards in case if they're not too, rely then they're not too uh, confident in Zeke's ability to, be able to land these Chronospheres. But Wraith King being picked up, so he's going to be the one position farmer for Sing 2, and he works very well against the Void, but works terribly against the Death Prophet and the Razor, since Razor, the closer you are to him, the more damage he's going to leech from you, so Razor can consistently neuter Wraith King's impact in these fights, and that works against you, since Wraith King is also very slow, and Death Prophet can run rings around the Wraith King, especially if she picks up the Yule Scepter, and with the uh, Exorcism flying around, Wraith King can't man fight it without dying, but the advantage of the Wraith King, especially if you decide to Clash Try be Try, is you have a very powerful, very aggressive a safe lane farm that can set up kills on your own, and Blink Dota actually banning out the Viper. And so faring the power of the Viper in the mid lane up against the Death Prophet, since Viper is one of those heroes that should win 
assuming that the player that both players have equal skill should win almost all matchups. There are very few matchups that favor the opposing hero as opposed to the Viper. And Witch Doctor being banned out due to the synergy with the Faceless Void. Since the Faceless Void, all of Blink Dota, all four heroes so far, synergize with the Faceless Void's Chronosphere. That's the reason why Faceless Void is so powerful in the current meta, is you use them to set up the rest of your team. And so Wraith King has to be very careful, but the advantage against the uh, Razor so you can static Lincoln, but the advantage of the Wraith King is he could set up kills for the rest of your team. And so if you decide to Clash Try V Try, Razor goes up for a last, the Wraith King stuns and the other two supports then come in and they set up the kill. So instead of relying on the supports to set up kills, you can rely on your carry to set up these kills. So Concussive Shock can fly up to ensure it. But it means that Sing 2, if you're playing, the offlaner has to be very careful against the Wraith King. Since you you have to, the Faceless Void as a melee hero has to be within Wraith Fire Blast range the whole time. If you want to go for CS. And they pick up Lich. So they're going to go for the Chain Frost Mass Serpent Ward combo with the Chronosphere. Blink Dota. They're taking a page from Sing 2's book. Since TYK and the ODR 1, they love their Wombo Combo team fights. And Silencer still is in the pool. has not been banned. This is a hero that would single-handedly... <laughs> Destroy the lineup of Blink if he gets a good Silence off. And Silence in the mid matchup against the Death Prophet does okay. If Death Prophet throws, throws out the Crypt Swarm, then you then throw out the Curse of the Silence. It forces her to invest a skill point into the Grave Silence unless she wants to eat the damage coming out from the Curse. So that still is an option available to Sing 2 to play around with. But they instead, they stick with the Sniper. So we're going to be seeing a Sniper mid, most likely. The Titans in the off lane and the Tri lane. With the uh, Wraith King, Skywrath Mage, and the Ancient Apparition. I don't really know how I feel about the Sniper pickup. Because the Death Prophet punishes heroes like Sniper. Who are very squishy. If Blink Snow plays very aggressive early on. And is able to out-CS the Sniper at level 1 and level 2. Before Sniper gets a few points up in the headshot and the take aim. He could uh, bully the Sniper out of lane. And actually go for kill attempts using the Crimson. But that being said. If Sniper, if he plays it very safe. If he gets a lot of uh, experience. Prepare for battle. <laughs> we've actually got a quick pause coming out. Well, a quick pause should be coming out, as it looks like Sing 2, one of their players has to go to the bathroom. If Sniper is able to get a few points up in the take aim, he can actually make it very difficult for the Crypt Swarms to be able to land. And if he's able to do that, then he should actually be able to do fairly well against the Death Prophet and at least break even. So, interesting players from both teams. Flash, gonna be that one position Razor over on the Tri Lane. With Yoshi, gonna be the four position over on the Shadow Shaman. Ziki, currently going as 49, hashtag 5200, going to be the offlane face of in that 3 position role. Snow, captain for the team, going to be the mid lane. And Bambi, the retarded Quizzling, going to be over on the Lich. Ward up on him as well as, as, well as the uh, Smoke of the Seat, so a lot of aggressive early action about to happen. Shadow Shaman looks like he pulled two uh, tangos over the Snow, starting with Boots first to ensure he can get that Shackle off. We've got the pause coming out as one of the players from Sing 2 has to go to the bathroom. And over for Sing 2. Pandy, who's their captain, over on the sniper, he's heading into the mid lane, he's being pulled two tango sign with a lot of stats to ensure he could get that as much CS as possible at level 1, level 2, when he's at the weakest. Sexy, gonna be playing the offline Tidehunter, choosing to start with a lot of regen as well as Ring of Protection. Interesting to note that he did chose to start with the Ring of Protection, since Tidehunter, you want to go for Arcane Boots opposed to Tranquil. So Ring of Protection, it does give you more survivability than the Stealth Shield, since you're gonna be investing two points in the Kraken Shell during the laning stage, so the Stealth Shield is completely irrelevant. But you usually see Tidehunter starting with Boots first. Especially against the Razor, since Razor, if he gets a good link off, you're screwed in that lane. And the Razor's a good counter pick to the Tide Hunter, since usually a Tide Hunter is able to do very well once the supports rotate, because he can anchor smash the carry and prevent them from CSing. But with the static link, it's very easy for Flash to stay on top of the damage. And Mickey Mouse, gonna be over on that uh, 5 position Ancient Apparition, or the 4 position Ancient Apparition, as Lambda Driver's gonna be the 4 position Skywrath Mage. Well, Gomu Gomu, formerly Kukar Pang, gonna be that Wraith King, choosing to start with a Quelling Blade. Which makes a lot of sense in this particular matchup, because he's going to be against the Void. And since Void has such an obscenely high level 1 stats, I think he's actually got the best level 1 stats in the game. I mean, 69 base damage, starting with just a poor, uh, poor man shield. So he's got that guaranteed block off, so it's going to be incredibly difficult to kill faces Void. Just because he's so damn hard to kill, especially since he'll most likely have time walk up at level 1. And probably going to be investing a point in the backtrack. Although we have seen players such as Broder choose to forego the uh, backtrack completely and go for more points in the time walk. Usually you see two points in the time walk, then you max out the time lock, and then at level 8 you pick up a point in the backtrack. Since two points on the time walk gives you enough room to work with, so you could reliably initiate and set up the chronosphere for your team. Ma otherwise you could choose to, if you're playing very defensively, max out the time walk, but the advantage of the time lock build, where you max out his E, is at level 6 or level 7, if the supports rotate, or if you ever catch a hero on their own, you can use the chronosphere and you can kill them just off the back of the double damage that you get for the time lock, since if time lock procs during Chronosphere, it does twice the amount of damage, so 140 magic damage at level 4. 
There's a lot of work, especially against the squishier support heroes. Wraith King's good against the Void in the sense that if he'll have Reincarnate up, or should have Reincarnate up, around the same time that Void gets the Chronosphere, if, if he picks up the Hand of Midas. Otherwise, there's a level or two where Void will have the advantage, but once he gets the Reincarnate, uh, Void can't kill him throughout the duration of the Chronosphere. But the drawback of that is if you're wasting your level 1 reincarnate, that gives the enemy team a huge timing window, since every time your reincarnate is up in the first 20 minutes of the game, and you're able to get a reliable reincarnate off, you pretty much win that fight. Just because the enemy team, they can't deal with the extra uh, hero being brought back to life. Zeke pushing himself forward, he's going to place the safety wall, it'll be interesting to see where he places it. He knows that he can't go for any obvious... Uh, safety wall placements. Looks like I'm actually having a bit of issues with my mic, so I'm just going to quickly fiddle my settings for a bit. Hopefully it shouldn't be anything too drastic. I haven't changed the settings at all from the last time I used them, so it could be just a minor issue over on my end. Apparently I sound like a robot. I think my stream might be having a few difficulties. I'll try closing the stream and see if it helps out. Just to ensure that the internet isn't being completely overloaded by that rate. Sexy picks up the Invis rune. Sentry Ward up on him. No Sentry Ward available for the sports of Blink. So he'll be able to get a fair amount of free experience off the back of that. Safety Ward being placed over by Zeke. I believe that might actually block out the pull cam. And they go for the very obvious uh, pub ward. So this is the ward. You don't want to go for this ward because it's so obvious because it gives you too much. And yeah, the ward actually blocks off the pull cam. So Zeke gets a lot from that ward. And Gomu Gomu with the Conning Blade should be able to out CS the face of Void if he's left alone. Sexy with the Invis Rune in the top lane. Should be able to leech a fair amount of experience. But Flash, he's a very experienced uh, one position player, so he knows how to control the creep equilibrium to ensure the enemy team gets as little experience as possible. And Tyler to actually playing very far forward. And we've got a stack coming out from uh, Victor Quisley over on the Lich. Stacking up the hard camp for Snow. So Snow in the mid lane, he's actually off to a good start, but Pandy as well, actually is doing better than what he expects. So the level 1 stats was the early point headshot, doing work, but Snow should be able to decisively win this lane. Especially with the Crypt Swarm coming online, since he's got his bottle and about 200 more gold. Sexy, he's, he's being scouted by Yoshi, Yoshi's playing very aggressively, he can't go for the Shackle, because he knows that he'll survive through it with the Kraken Shell. And as well as the Anchor Smash, so he tries to skill Ether Shock at 1, using it to harass him back, since Ether Shot's a very cost efficient spell to use against the offlane heroes. It's 120 damage for 95 minus, so very effective ability to use. The only drawback is it only hits one target at level 1. Ward is being pinged out, but Lambda Driver unfortunately completely whiffed it, so that pull cap is completely useless, and he has, he's got zero experience. Mickey Mouse, level 2 now, so he tries to skill the, cold, the uh, Chilling Touch up at 1. Faces Void, eats an Arcane Bolt to the face, Lambda Driver unfortunately pushes himself forward and eats a Tower Shot. So Zeke actually comes out on the better end from that, since with that poor man shield, and with his base stats, he doesn't take all too much damage from their right clicks. And Pandy, he's very low, this is the issue with having a Sniper in the mid lane against the Death Prophet, his Death Prophet can just bully him out with the Crypt Swarm. Looks like he's choosing to go for early points in the Shrapnel, so probably going to be maxing out that Shrapnel, and the advantage of that build is that every time you're able to uh, Shrapnel in the mid tower, you deal a lot of chip damage that they can't prevent. Looks like we've actually got a pause coming out. Yeah, it looks like I'm having some internet issues on my end. So hopefully should be able to sort it out on my end. I'm just going to quickly check to see how the stream is looking while we're caught up in this pause. Orcon, please. Just going to check to see what I sound like on the stream. But Flash, he actually knows the players from Sing 2 very well. In fact, he almost joined TYK last season. What if he's left alone? Okay, looks like the stream is good to go, so... Hopefully the internet issues should resolve themselves. And while it's happening, I'm going to take a quick look at the golden experience. Very marginal lead, so 400 gold lead. And 400 experience leads. Let's just do the, do the superior efficiency in the last hits. So no, 5 more CS and 1 more deny over than Pandy. And Pandy has to be very careful now since one right, uh, two right clicks and the Crypt Swarm is enough to kill him. <laughs> and Victor throwing out his, giving his two cents worth. Wraith King probably wants to be building towards the Hand of Midas as soon as possible so you can keep up in terms of experience since you want to get your level 2 reincarnate as soon as possible to cut down from the 240 uh, cooldown, 260 cooldown. And then you want to pick up your Blink Dagger after that to let you engage. 
Since then, Wraith King, once he's got the reincarnate up, you can blink in very aggressively since you know that the enemy team, they can't focus you. Since if they kill you, you're going to come back to life and provide that snare. And it also means that you're wasting as little time as possible when you throw out your Wraith Fire Blast. Just going to take a quick drink of water while we pause. So the safety wall being placed by Zuki blocks out the pull cam, wasting a lot of Lambda Driver's time. He's had to buy another set of sentries, just to attempt to deward that. Since it looks like they used a sentry to block off the pull camp. But the safety ward from Titan to looks like it was actually... It wasn't used at all, they actually chose to ward off both sides of the river, so you usually only want to ward one side off. So the advantage of this ward is it gives you a lot of defensive vision, it also means that you could you can use it aggressively as well to see if they're using their ancients. But when you've already got a ward covering rune, you don't need another ward. You usually want you, you want a safety one in that case. So it looks like Ku Peng going as Gomu Gomu has reconnected back in the Dota, so he should be back in. But Ziki on this offlane faces void hasn't taken too much damage. And that's just due to the poor man shield. He's got a point up in the backtrack now. And that 10% PID chance to completely negate one instance of damage. <laughs> Got a bit of friendly banter happening from both teams. And so now in the mid lane, he's got his ball flying onto him. Pandy actually chose to finish his ring of Aquila. So choosing not to start with to get boots ASAP, so he won't, he know he's playing very safe. But the drawback to this is if Snow gets his boots up, he can play very aggressively against Pandy. So the advantage of Sniper in the mid lane position is he doesn't necessarily need uh, bottle control. It's the reason why. You don't really see Sniper too often in the mid lane. Is that their heroes are more efficient mid because they can at least contest rune control and get runes. And Sniper has no way to effectively clear out the creep wave. He's got shrapnel, but it doesn't immediately clear out the wave the same way the Crisp Swarm does since it deals with damage over time. But the advantage of Sniper in the mid lane is if your supports are active and able to steal the rune or guard the rune for you, you could sit mid and every time the enemy hero backs away, you can use your shrapnel to be able to deal a lot of chip damage to their tower. Snow throws out Crypt Swarm, unfortunately whips on Panty, since Panty's playing very safe. And so he's doing what he can to ensure that Snow has a difficult time. Snow now rotates top since he knows that there's a regen rune. Since the, his defensive warp being placed here spots out the... Uh, ensures that there's no rune over in the bottom lane. So the advantage of this defensive warp being placed there is it means that they have to smoke if they want to go for a rotation. As well as providing some rune vision. So Panty denying out Snow. Utilizing the almost instant projectile speed. But that being said, Snow still is off to a great start. 17 for 3, so he's got a lot more CS than Pandy. And Death Prophet's able to snowball a lot faster than the Sniper can. So Sniper, you want to pick up at least 2 items before you really become effective. Whereas the Death Prophet, once you have a uh, phase boots up, you could go for a lot of kill attempts. Sexy being left alone against Flash. Flash choosing not to go for a static link. Instead just hanging back and CSing. Probably going to be going towards the Hand of Midas. This is the biggest issue with Blink, because they, they're two core players, or at least on the offlane and the safe lane, they love to go for Hand of Midas's. And so the best way to be able to win against Blink, or to do well against him, Yoshi goes very far forward, he's taking a lot of tower shots, Pandy eats the shackles whilst the Crypt Swarm, stands his ground, feeds first blood, but he gets a retaliatory kill, right as he dies. So good effort coming up from Pandy. he knows that he's dead because they could just run him down, especially with the boots advantage, so he at least stands the ground and kills Yoshi, so he gets a return kill. So it means that even though he died, he's still able to keep up somewhat in terms of EXP since they got that kill right as he died. And Gomu Gomu, a point up in each of his abilities. So the most DPS efficient build for the Wraith King is if you actually go for one point in the stun and you choose to max out your crit. But the disadvantage of that is it gives you less reliable damage since maxing out the Wraith Fire Blast. The Wraith Fire Blast mana cost is always the same. And so you might as well max it out to make it a lot more efficient. Victor, he's now got boots up on him. So it's the advantages of selling out, you do get very early boots over in the support position. Pandy boots up on him as well, so Ring of Aquila, he's actually got it toggled on. And choosing to max out, take aim. It's a very safe build coming up from him, Sexy. Boots now up on him, he's being leashed up by Flash. And Flash, it looks like he chose to upgrade his uh, phase boots. So the Raze is usually here, you don't want to go ahead and minus on because you're a mid game hero, so you want to be as, uh, you want to come online as quickly as possible and be relevant at all stages of the game. So face boots helps you do that. You can also go for treads. It's usually a matter of player preference. Since both boots are equally viable on him. 
With the advantage of the phase boost, it gives you a lot more chasing power, and it means that you can get a, uh, you're much more likely to get a good link off. Whereas treads, you build treads if you know the enemy team's gonna be attacking you, in which case you're acting as a bullet catcher. Whoa, is that a 5200 corpus of silence? Not 5200 Ziki. <laughs> and he gets right clicked down by Ancient Apparition. So good support rotation coming out from Lambda Drive as well as Mickey Mouse, able to use the Ancient Seal as he turned around and was about to time walk. Because the advantage of the Wraith King is, you can, is he can set up kills for his supports, as opposed to the other way around, so it means that the offlaner has to play very carefully, especially when you're playing against a team that's uh, well experienced with the Wraith King. I'm choosing to max out the Wraith Fire Blast, cho uh, chose to pick him an early Magic Stick. So Wraith King, Magic Stick is an absolutely fantastic item on him, because all of his abilities cost 140 mana. He's only got two abilities, the Ray Fire Blast and the Reincarnate, that are active. And so as so long as you have 140 mana, you're good to go. Titan actually chose to go for Tranquil, so Sexy chose to go for Tranquil as opposed to Arcane Boots. The advantage of the Tranquil is it's a great efficiency item, but he's going to be very careful. As Saki Senpai runs for the Leash up on him. Leash unfortunately breaks before taking the damage. Frost and the Blast comes out. Level 2 Plasma Field does a lot of damage. Snow has a haste room, so they're starting to dive this. They need a support rotation. Sexy, he's going to be losing his life to Ether Shock from Shadow Shaman cleaning him up. Let's well, four heroes rotating top to get one kill. While that's happening, Pandy in the mid lane is able to find his farm and recover somewhat. He still is behind the CS in terms compared to Snow. But with Death Prophet being out of lane, he's at least picked up some experience, so he's got the Assassinate online. But Snow, with that kill, with the kills going in his favor, since he's been involved in two now, level seven, almost level eight. So he's almost got that maxed out Witchcraft. Actually chose not to go for a point in the Exorcism, and in the bot lane, once again, Skyrath Mage, that combo with the Ancient Seal, actually able to bring him down. Looks like he didn't even use the Ancient Seal for that one. So good execution coming out from Sing 2, at least able to recover in one of their lanes. And Sexy in the top lane, he's just biding his time until he gets level 6. But the drawback of the Titans are against the Razor is you can't kill Razor with the Ravage, unless he's very low HP. Since the initial burst damage won't be enough to kill him, and then Razor will just start leashing you and he can stand his ground. <laughs> and Zeki calling out the hate that's going on in his hands since he's both. Since him and uh, Yoshi have been on the desk for his team. But 1000 gold lead in favor of Blink Dota, that's just due to the superior efficiency in CS. Even though Sing 2 have more kills, but 500 gold, uh, EXP lead. So the EXP lead's a lot closer. And Sniper is starting to recover. He's got face boots now up. It's going to be difficult for the Crypt Swarms to latch on them, especially at max range. But Death Prophet actually chose to completely forgo Exorcism. The rationale behind this is the Exorcism level 1, you don't really use it unless you absolutely have to. Because Exorcism level 1 is actually a fairly terrible skill, at least until you get the maxed out Witchcraft. And so this build means that you're, you're choosing not to waste any mana with the Exorcism. But the drawback to this is it doesn't give you much pushing power. But the advantage is it makes your uh, Crypt Swarm a lot more efficient, so you can spam them out more, gives you a lot more movement speed to work with, since 395 movement speed without the phase. So Death Prophet's very mobile, and you're going to be hitting level 8 fairly soon. Since he knows that Sniper isn't going to leave mid. If it's if you're against the mid hero that leaves mid, such as the Puck, that's going to rotate when he gets a rune, then you want to go for Exorcism, because every time he leaves the lane, you can then push the tower down. But in the, but when you're against a Sniper, you want to bully him out of the lane. Chronos Bear latches on 2, but unfortunately catches out Snow. So Snow isn't going to be too happy with that, and Mickey Mouse looks like it's going to be a sacrificial lamb, Crypt Swarm flies out, Fire Fire Blast over on Zeki, Goma Goma fleeing for his life, he doesn't have to reincarnate, Snow should be able to clean him up with one more Crypt Swarm coming out from him, Time Walk forward, and he gets a double kill to back it out, Zeki, he tries to make up for it, Time Walk doesn't do anything, so he just wastes a bit of mana. But that Chronos Bear sets up two kills, so they're more than happy with that. Could have also gotten the kill on the Skyrath Mage, if they were more efficient with the Chronos Bear, if they, could, if they didn't catch Snow out. But apples and oranges, very slight difference. Bambi in the mid lane, leeching some ESP, so he gets level 6, so he can start utilizing that chain frost. Actually, has one point in sacrifice and choose to go for earlier points in frost armor. And Saxi has actually been driven out of his lane. He actually TP'd to bot because he's got Ravage online, so he has to try to make a play for his team. And faces Void, going for a split build, two points in the walk, and then now he's going to choose to max out the bash. Since the second point is the most efficient, it's the same with the Razor, usually see 4 2 1 and before you pick up a point in your ultimate, or before you choose to max out your other abilities, since Eye of the Storm, similar to the Exorcism, you usually don't go for a point in it until you level... Uh, it's not a very effective ability at level 1. So you usually leave the Eye of the Storm until level 10, so you can pick up level uh, earlier points in the Unstable Current, so it gives you a lot more mobility. But two points at the, of the Static Link is usually enough for you to be effective, since you want more movement speed over the races so you can get a good link off. But if you're playing against a team 
that doesn't have the mobility to escape a static link, then you could choose to invest more points in the static link. So having a few lag issues. Looks like the stream should be good to go. And Snow rotating top with the uh, regen rune. He's got exorcism available now, so he can try to push down the tail one over in the top lane. But in the mid lane, while that's happening, Pandy's just continuing to sit there and find his farm. And it looks like he's going towards the early Mask of Madness. Sniper is one of the few heroes in the game, but early Mask of Madness is actually very good on him. Similar to the Faces Void, Mask of Madness provides a substantial increase in your overall DPS. It's the most cost efficient DPS item you can build on a lot of heroes. And then Sniper, most of his damage is coming from his headshot. And Faces Void, most of the damage is coming from his time lock. But, and while I say on the top lane, Sexy gets called out of the Chronosphere. As all four heroes from Blink, with the exception of the Snow, over in the top lane, they're able to secure a kill off the back of that Chronosphere. So they should be able to deal a lot of chip damage over on the tail one the top lane. And since Yoshi, he's picked up level 6, they actually should be able to take this tail one the top lane if they decide to commit the Master Serpent Wards. Which they probably should be looking to do. Yeah, Master Serpent Wards have been committed. And they're going to be able to take their first tower of the game over the top lane. Sexy can't really defend this. He doesn't want to waste Ravage because they can't fight his fight against that. Lambda Driver almost is level 6, so once he has Mystic Flare, they can start looking to make a play a lot more aggressively. But the drawback of the Sniper is he can't really make space or control the tempo of the game. Since he's a carry hero first and a pseudo gank is second, if you get lucky. Pandy's just going to be sitting mid until he gets his core items and then he can look to create space. Whereas the Death Prophet, just what levels she could create space. Yule Scepter now up, so a 12 minute Yule Scepter for Snow. Fantastic farm up on him. In terms of net worth, we see Snow lead the scoreboards, followed by Flash. Pandy and Gomu Gomu are a little bit behind, but at least they're able to keep up somewhat. It's just due to the fact that there's been more kills and more, and that tower now going in favor of Blink. <coughs> but the drawback of um, Sniper and this team, especially against a Void, is so long as Void catches out the Sniper in the Chronosphere, Blink will be able to win every single team fight. Then Sing 2, they don't, the only hero they have that can really punish the Void if he gets a bad Chrono is the um, Tidehunter and maybe the Skyrath Mage if you catch another hero, since you can Mystic play the hero that of one of Void's allies, since you don't want to Mystic Flare the Void, since he's got a thousand movement speed, you can just walk out of it. Immediately time walks himself back. And with the Gloves pickup, since he chose not to finish his treads, probably going to be going towards No Never Mind, he's not going to go for treads this time. Usually Ziki says so to be a bit cheeky and go towards the Hand of Midas, but this game he knows he's not going to get Midas for a long time. So choosing to go for treads, probably going to be picking up the Mask of Madness and then build towards an Aghanim Scepter for his team. Standard Void build. Snowy, microing is illusion, but unfortunately the illusion does damage, and so it shows it's an illusion. Otherwise, if he just kept it there, and kept it running around, tried to go for CS, he could use it to at least draw out a few spells, a few damage, but apparently that maxed out take aim, should be able to instantly clear out their illusion. Mechanism now up on flash, and so Blink, they're ready for their death ball, that's online. Zeke blinks forward over on Gomu Gomu. They don't want to use the Chronosphere just for him. Chronosphere catches out Mickey Mouse, and unfortunately runs forward. Exorcism now being popped in the back line. Lambda Lambda dodges the Skyrath. And the uh, Crypt Sword actually turns around, Ravage flies out, Reincarnate being used, they're able to get a kill over on Void, Saki Senpai fleeing for his life, throws out the Chain Force, Chain Force kills Sexy Sexy, Mass Simplots traps Goma Goma, great play coming off from Yoshi, they're able to get a kill off the back of that. And they get 3 for 1, as well as burning off the Reincarnate. And Flash actually could get another kill on Lambda Driver with that uh, Plasma Field. Lambda Driver is like, he's dead, there's nothing he can do to keep himself alive. Plasma Field's coming off, cooling in one more second. And Yoshi's even out of this, this KS him if he absolutely wants to. Pandy, there's only so much a sniper can do, even one with Mask of Madness. Force to use Mask of Madness defensively to flee for his life. Call up the Yule Step, that's gonna be another kill. And blink, their death balls come online. <laughs> it's coming right at you. Plasma Field should be to clean him up. Ancient Apparition Ice Blast flies out. Goma Goma comes in, but he TPs into four. He's gonna be very careful. Shackle comes out. Sakis so Senpai is actually he, clearing himself up so he can get the Frost Blast off, but Snow cleans him up. 5-0 for 3, Snow is absolutely on fire this game, that's a tier 1 in the safe lane, they're going to be losing as well. Great mass open one trap over on the uh, Wraith King as he reincarnates, so he completely neuters him from the fight. And Zeke, he's more than happy to die in exchange to set that up, he's actually choosing to go for more points over in the time walk as well as the backtracks, so he knows he's playing from behind. All they need, all his team needs him for is the ult. So he's just reduced to a arc click hero, but he's more than happy to play that role as the offlaner. You work with what you have, you want to constantly be adjusting your build to match the game, so you usually have the most flexible play on your team as the offlaner, since they're sometimes going to be going for questionable items of skill builds and have to make it work. Looks like I'm having a lot of, a huge amount of lag, actually I've disconnected. Hopefully the internet should be fixing itself momentarily. Do apologize for this. 
<laughs> it looks like my flatmate's actually been posting uh in a flat page to let people know that we're casting right now. So please no HD porn downloads. Wait till after the game. Pandy, pop some Mask Commanders playing very aggressively. The advantage of the Mask Commanders over in the sniper is if you catch a support hero out, you can DPS them down. Because they can't escape from you, especially with the Assassinate. You run up, you, you get a few headshot procs in, and you finish them off the Assassinate to ensure the kill. Now we've loaded, and looks like I didn't miss anything too important. Goma Goma. Looks like he's going towards the with a mithril hammer. It could be going towards either an early BKB or an early desolator. Either or, early desolator on the racing is very good. But the issue is being able to close the distance. You've got two very mobile heroes over on Blink, Death Prophet and the Razor. They're two, some of the fastest heroes in the game, just at the back of their passives, especially since they both opted to go for phase boots as well. And Zeke with the time walk, you could constantly make it very difficult for you to engage on him. And Lich as well is actually one of the fastest support heroes with 315 movement speed. So with the Wraith King, because he's playing from behind, right, you never want to play from behind when you're a Wraith King, because you're a hero that's so powerful in the early game that you have to win your lane and get ahead. Yeah, well he did win his lane, up against Zeki, the rest of the, the other two lanes didn't really go in their team's favor. The greed from the sniper pickup, up against the DP, didn't really work out too well. Flash should be able to clean up that tower CS, looks like Zeki takes it from him. And Flash, he's already going towards the Aghanim Scepter. And the death ball from Blink is online. Every time their ultimates are up, which they are now, just waiting for a bit more mana on Snow. They can group up as 5 and take a tower. Mech's been used. Yeah, they're grouping up. They're going to take the tier 2 in the bottom lane. And that deprives the usage of the jungle for the enemy team. Goma Goma's actually going to be very careful. Two man corner spare comes up from Zeki. Very fast on the trigger. Static Link over on Goma Goma. Mickey Mouse takes a fall as well. Looks like we're still having lag issues over at my end. I do apologize. But they should be able to take the tier 2 off the back of that. Mass Serpent once been committed. And great execution coming up from Blink. As I know the strength of their draft, and Zeke being able to set up plays for the rest of his team, so even though he is the majority of their deaths, he's at least being the playmaker. Tattoo Tower takes the fall, Snow is able to hold the line with the tail 1, he looks like he used Exorcism defensively to drive them back. Zeke's now got his Mask and Madness, Pandy. There's only so much a sniper can do when you're playing from when your team's playing from behind, because you don't have the void to set you up, you've got the Tide Hunter to create space, but when Tide is going for Arcane Boots, and when he's not going to have, when he's going for Tranquil Boots, sorry, when he doesn't have a Blink Tag anytime soon, Makes it very difficult, but the execution power flies out as they gun down Snow in the mid lane with the Ancient Apparition Ice Blast, followed by the Assassinate, so some cheeky recovery play coming out from Sing 2. A sexy, he spot him out, well, at least 5 2, well, Zeki and Asaki Senpai spot him out. Still having some crazy lag spikes on my end, I wonder what the hell the pig is. I guess I can't see it as the cast the sexy, he's gonna be stacking up the hard camp, trying to find some recovery from Royce, and Atlanta Driver spotted out. Chain Frost being committed on Pandy as well. 5 to and Zeki caught up with the, with the Mask of Madness, the Ancient Seal as well. Doesn't able to get there in time. But the Quizzling Victor Chi, the retarded bandy, gets blown up. Mystic Flare completely whiffed, but Skyrath Mage is still able to clean him up on the back line. But your faceless void survives. Chain Frost was expensive, so that was a very expensive gank that went the wrong way. They need that Chain Frost for when they have the Corona Sphere to be able to help set up these kills. And Sexy, he's nowhere near his Blink Dagger. He's about almost halfway now if you get, once he finishes up that Creep Wave. Mask of Man is online. Land the driver immediately being pinged out. Grave Silence catches on him. Really Snow diving very far forward. 2,800 gold up on him. We'll be interested to see what IME chooses to go for. Probably going to be seeing something like maybe a Shiva's Guard or a Harder Tarask. Ancient Apparition Ice Boss flies. Catches Yoshi. Wasn't able to jump over that one. And Zeki, he's got the level 4 time location. Catches out 2 with the Chronos Fair. Ancient Seal being used up on him. Lambda Driver, Yule Cycle owned up. I thought he caught through with that. Crypt Swarm, unfortunately, flies on a 1. Gomu, Gomu, try up the, with the Shackle. Coming out from uh, Yoshi's Wolf, the Master Open Wolf, Mask and Madness, he's being smacked now, Reincarnate being wasted once again, Mickey Mouse, down his ground, Mike's going to do a bit of damage over Yoshi, Yoshi takes the fall, the Assassinate cleans him up, but Gomu Gomu takes the wall the back of that. 3 for 1, in exchange for a Master Open Wolf and Chronosphere, very happy to take that trade, Pandy, holding his ground with the Time Walk forward, Mask and Madness being Mask and Madness, which mom's spaghetti is stronger, you'll step to up on Sexy, to ensure he can't do anything, Flash gets a pretty poor aesthetic link off, he knew that he couldn't really get more than a single charge off it. But he's, he's almost got his Aghanim Scepter, 600 gold away from that. The Exorcism is still up for a little bit longer, so they'll be doing a bit more chip damage. Unfortunately, they, all their pushing powers are down. So Blink, they're, they're starting to back off. They know they can't fight as 5, especially now that Sing 2 have all respawned. Ancient Apparition Night Blast flies completely whoops. Zeke, he immediately pings out the fact that the Ancients have been stacked up. So Blink, they're going to look to at least contest the Ancients or take them away from the main team. So next time they take their tier 2, they'll look to clear out the Ancients. And Tide Hunter, that's his recovery farm. Unfortunately, wasn't able to get the stack off. 
If that was a quad stack, he'd, 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 he's able to clean that up. That would have been his Blink Dagger. And having the Blink Dagger and perhaps a level 2 Ravage in the next fight could have swung it. But all in all, Sexy over that offline Tide Hunter isn't able to accomplish as much as Ra He's only had one Ravage this entire game so, so far. Just because Blink, the execution coming out off the back of Zeke's Chronos Fest has been absolutely phenomenal. Lander Driver runs forward, eats the uh, Plasma Field. He's got to be a bit careful. When Pandy's in the front line, you never want to have Sniper on your front line. That's because. Zeke can time walk into him, Chronosphere him out and just smack him around. And so he's building towards, could be the uh, Maelstrom. Maelstrom's a great pick up the Sniper, especially when you're going for this Mask of Madness build. So you've got the attack speed to constantly proc Lightning. But it also could be a Desolator or a BKB. BKB would be great as well to give him that survivability. Goma Goma, going towards that BKB. Well, when Wraith King rushes a BKB, things are looking dire. Because you have that Reincarnate, if, so long as you're against a lineup that isn't able to inhibit your Reincarnate. So for instance, if they had like a Lion or a... Plus Wex Invoker, they could EMP you and burn your mind, prevent you from reincarnating. You don't need a BKB until you finish another item. Because the reincarnate effectively acts as a BKB, since if you do die after you eat all their spells, you come back to life, they no longer have their CC, they no longer have the mind to control you, and then you kill them. So you want to build damage to make you... Damage and survivability, so it takes a lot of resources from their side to bring you down during reincarnate. It's the reason why Armlet's such a great pickup on the Wraith King, as well as the Blink Dagger, since you can always blink out when you re once you reincarnate. And then you want to build towards a BKB. Once you've got enough damage to warrant all the all the CC coming out from the enemy team. Since otherwise, you want to tank it for your team so they don't have to deal with it. Especially when you've got a hero like a sniper. So when you go for a BKB, they can still control you very well. Raises your static links you and it forces you back. So the Wraith King pickup, very questionable. Very aggressive warping place. And, and Zeki blinks forward, catches out sexy. Yoshi blinks forward as well, revealing his blink dagger. Throws out the ether shock. And Zeke is able to clean it up off the back of the Mask of Madness. Looks like he's going towards a BKB, so... Blink, sometimes I don't like going towards the Aghanim Scepter. When you're playing a head like this, you don't necessarily need it. Zeke actually cops a lot of damage if they commit the Mystic Flanders. They can actually go for a killer table. Lambda Driver chooses not to do so, he's actually that cleans it up. But he eats the Ether Shock, Mickey Mouse going to the Sacrificial Lamb, in exchange for that kill. And Sexy called out in the back line. Shackle over, Goma, 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 doesn't have reincarnate. Mystic Flight completely whips. Shiva's guy cleans up uh, Lambda Driver. And Blink still gets a double kill. Actually, Flash is able to clean that up as well in the back line. And with the Aghanim Scepter, Eye of the Storm, they should be able to, and the Exorcism up, they should be able to take the Tier 3 tower. And things are looking grim for the boys from Thailand. 14,000 gold lead in favor of Blink Donut. 11,000 EXP lead. First of the racks is going to go in their favor. And still no Blink Dagger online for Thailand. He hasn't been able to get a single successful Ravage off. And Chapmission Ice Blast flies, he could choose to commit the Ravage now if he wants to defend, but the Yule Scepter up on Snow. So Snow wants to prevent that uh, Ravage from coming out. Mass Serpent has been committed, so they should be able to get the tower. So they get the set of racks. Flash runs forward, pops the mech, immediately backs off. And Sing 2, the game is looking very difficult for them to try to recover. Sexy, trying to farm up the wards, but unfortunately, the Anchor Smash doesn't actually work on the Mass Serpent wards, so he actually cops a fair amount of damage in exchange for that. And Gomu Gomu. He's there with that, maxed out, with, the, with three points up in the Vampiric Aura, so he should be the farm up very nicely. And now Roshan being pinged out. Zeke, he's probably going to be the one that he wants to carry it, but most likely going to be either going to be Flash and Snow. You don't want to get have the Aegis over on Death Prophet, because the Exorcism doesn't persist through Aegis. Either Storm persists through Aegis, so that means Flash is, the, is usually the better carrier, but Faceless Void is also a great carrier as well. Especially since he's the one that's got the most deaths for his team, since he's the one leaping in and initiating. But that being said, the advantage of the Aegis on the Death Prophet is it means that you can play very far forward and very aggressive. But yeah, it looks like Faces Void is going to be the Aegis Carrier. Almost goes BKB up. And they immediately smoke up. 5-man smoke rotation heading into the mid lane. Where the boys from Thailand are fleeing for their lives. Lambda Drivers, Mystic Flares have been fairly questionable. If he could get these good Mystic Flares off. But he needs the Ravage to set it up. Sexy, he's actually been spotted out by Snow. Leash. Over on Goma Goma, Goma Goma takes the forwards, reincarnating though, but he's going to be taking a second death, no pops achievements guard, catches out Lambda Driver, Zeke blinks forward, catches out two with the Chronos Fair, catches out Mickey Mouse and Mo, Mickey Mouse will be taking four, Goma Goma, pull up the Frost Blast from Victor Coisling, Flash smacking him around, he's got the Plasma Field online, he's going to clean him up, and Death Prophet takes out the kill on the back end, Pandy, he at least burns the Aegis, Sexy, he's got the Ravage, but he's not able to get it off, the entire team's clumped up around him, finally gets a Ravage on form, Pandy's going to do damage, this is, the this is what they needed to be to win these fights, Pandy fleeing for his life. As Sexy's cleaned up by Snow, and Snow with the Eel Scepter is there, it should be able to bring him down, especially with the amount of DPS coming out from him. Yoshi blinks forward, Plasma Field flies out as well, but GG's been called, Pandy just barely lives. 
So 25 minutes into the game, Blink Dota off the back of some impressive death balls, some good execution coming up from Snow. Are able to take a very decisive game number one. We're going to take a quick, uh, quick break and we'll be right back for game number two. Stay tuned. <laughs> 